Hey folks, it's me again, Emeril Lagasse here. And tonight we're going to give some very special lessons because we got a great, great show for you on some basic sauces or mother sauces. Well, that's what they're called in classical French cooking. Once you master them, though, these mother sauces, boy, by adding a few kicked up ingredients, you can flavor your sauces to an exciting array of delectable sauces. Get ready. It's getting a little saucy in here, if you know what I'm saying. And you know where, right? Right here on Emerald Live. Stick around. Hey, guys, how you doing, buddy? How you doing tonight? I'm ready for some Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody, in the house. <laughs> Doc, you ever hear of mother sauces? No, I haven't. Well, that's why we're here, baby. All right. <laughs> Gonna show them a little bit about mother sauces. See, you might have seen, uh, we've done a show not long ago on some other mother sauces. We actually covered tomato. We, uh, we did the Hollandaise family. We actually did the Bechamel family. This show, totally different mother sauces. This is really the brown mother sauces. And now we're going to explain that to everybody later. Nobody panic. Don't worry. There's not a quiz till later on in the show. But there's definitely... How you guys doing? All right? Great. Great. How are you, my friend? There's uh, definitely some things needed when you're making... Mother sauces. I love that word. <laughs> so you have mother sauces, but then when you add flavoring and ingredients to them, they become compound sauces. But we won't confuse the issue right now. We'll stay on mother sauces. Uh, a mirepoix. That's what this stuff is right here. Classical mirepoix is needed. You see, cooking is very, very simple once you understand the basics because it's universal. Take example as the mirepoix, another one of my favorite words. I think the next time I buy a dog, I'm calling it mirepoix. <laughs> I just, it has a ring to it, you know? <whistles> well, we won't go there. Okay. No, we won't go there. <laughs> Carrots, celery, onions. It's the general ingredients for a mirepoix. Now, if we had no carrots and bell pepper, We'd have the Trinity, and only Louisiana has the Trinity. But if a mirepoix here in New York City is the same thing in Toronto, or is it, hey, here's all my friends in Canada, how you doing? Uh, it's the same thing in Japan. So a mirepoix is universal. And you've got to have a good mirepoix, because one of the great things to have in a great mother sauce is you've got to have a great, particularly this type of uh, sauce, you've got to have a great stock. So let's cut through that. Or do you want me to get technical? No. All right. I can get technical if you'll. Let's turn into Professor Lagasse just for a minute. <laughs> These are some statistical facts from the home office here in New York City. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> Basically, three characteristics, folks, folks, to a great sauce. One is the taste, obviously. Two is the texture. Is it light? Is it smooth? Is it rough in your mouth? And the glossy appearance, which is also the reason for a glossy appearance, is a lot of the proteins that are in there. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. And if you're not confused, let me get really technical for a minute. <laughs> Anton Karem was really the man that started this path out to universify French classical cooking. And then Escoffier came into the... You've heard of him, right? <laughs> then Escoffier came into the program after Karem and basically laid out not only the four that Chef Karem did, but he added one. So the five mother sauces, if you just joined us from another planet, we have velouté. We've done that before. 
But if you haven't seen it, don't worry, we're going to talk about it. Bechamel, that's the cream sauce. Third one is Espanol. That's what we're going to do tonight because it's brown-based. Then you have Hollandaise and you have tomato, which we've also done. So let's cut through it and let me uh, show you. Basically, you go to the butcher. Go see Vinny. <laughs> well, Vinny's my butcher. Do you have a butcher? No. Okay. <laughs> well, you can go see whatever, one of those companies. Stop and shop or whatever, shop right, whatever. Go get some beef bones. That's the thing. And you want to have this marrow in it. Because remember I said about the glossy appearance? That's where it comes from. The proteins come a lot from the bone marrow. Now, what do you do? I mean, this isn't brain surgery here, okay? Look, put the bones inside of a pot. You know what I'm saying? Add a little bit of salt. Add some pepper. Now oh, they stole the pepper mill. All right, add some pepper. What you want to do, you got to roast them in the oven. Why? We're making them brown. If we wanted not to have a brown sauce, we'd have a white sauce or a white stock. Now I've confused myself. <laughs> you brown them 350, 370 degrees. When they're browned, good and brown, and we're extracting those proteins out of there, door number one, door number two, What happens is that they get really good and brown, just like they are right here. You see that? You see how brown they are now? It's very important to make a brown stock. You could even do this with chicken. If you put chicken in a pot, you don't get them brown, you get a white chicken stock. If you put them in the oven, you get them brown like I'm going to show you right here. You get a brown chicken stock. Here's the key. Tomato paste. See, it's good for something beside tomato sauce. Because, you know, that's the kind of question that I get. Thank God. What do I do? I got 17 cans of tomato paste inside my cabinet for four and a half years, Emerald. What do I do for it? Because I haven't made tomato sauce in quite a long time. Do you have any tips for that tomato paste? Yes, make stock. See, you're painting the bones right here. And you don't have to get fancy, folks. I mean, you don't have to, like, have a paintbrush or anything like I've got. You can just add it on there, but you want to paint the bones. You want to add this tomato product on your beef bones. Now, you have probably have heard of a big fancy word or on a lot of restaurant menus, a fond de veau. Well, that's basically a veal stock. That's what that means. And that is brown, too. They just take veal bones instead of beef. After you paint your bones like that, they're already seasoned. you got to get some layers of flavor. That's when the mirepoix comes in. And, you know, the, the, it says, well, you should mix this in a bowl. You know, you read the recipe. Psh, give me a break. <laughs> I mean, you go dirty three bowls. You know what I'm saying? I'm just adding a thing right in there. Add a little bit of salt like that, you know. A little pepper. Now we're going to put these back in the oven. And now the mirepoix is going to cook. And the tomato paste is going to get all nice and golden and bubbly, and the bones are going to be happy. And Well, stick around. You'll see what I mean. Don't even think about touching that dial. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs is in the house, everybody. <laughs> So, if you just joined us for some reason, we're doing a little mother sauces tonight. We love that. Mother sauces. Mother sauces. <laughs> Anyhow, but we're doing the brown mother sauces tonight. We've done tomato, we've made velouté, we've made hollandaise. Three of those are the mother sauces on, a, on another show. And we've roasted our bones, which is why I've got these uh, little side towels here. You can see the mirepoix. You see that? 
how it's nice and tender and all roasted in there. That's a beautiful thing. The tomato paste that we took out of your cabinet when you weren't looking. <laughs> well, you wouldn't know because it's been so many years, but anyhow. You can see what's that, and that's going to give it that nice color. This is cooking foundations. Now, you got to deglaze the pan. Get all of that nice goodies down there is what I like to call it. Very important. To do that, a little wine. Now what you do, some people, some people think that you should put this back in the stove after you deglaze it like that. You can see the steam. Some people think that you, uh, you know, you could do it on top of the stove. Yeah, those are all right. But that's not how we're going to do it here. We're doing it the classical way. Aren't you impressed? Speaking about the classical way, I think we need a little more wine. <laughs> then, once we get all of that, even though that we've got, and you can smell, you don't have to do any like, uh, you know, big grand vintages. What you want to do now, we got all of that, is we're going to begin the stock process. Now, I'm going to use this so I don't splash my friend over here. I'm going to add this bones into a stock pot. Now you know why they got that name called the stock pot. This is really easy stuff, folks. And this is not stuff that you do every day. This is not, you know, I realize at home, you know, you're not running a restaurant. But this is stuff that you can do really on a monthly basis, a couple of weeks or on a week basis. It freezes fantastic. And uh, then when you have great stock, you can then make great sauces. And that's where we're going to go from here. Now I'm going to take all of this wonderful stuff and the wine and the mirepoix. We're going to add that right in there. You want to get it all. Wow, that was difficult, wasn't it? Yeah. See, we're really building some new kicked up space rocket. I just haven't told you yet. That comes later. Now, what we're going to do, we cover this, folks, with water. Just regular H2O. No big deal. You want to cover the bones. Whatever quantity you have, you want to cover the bones, just like what we've done. Now, let me talk about this for a second, because we're going to bring this to a boil. When it comes to a boil, we're going to simmer this. Because unlike a fish stock, as an example, if we add shellfish or shells or fish bones, 45 minutes and we, got a, we have a fish stock. You don't cook them a long time. The proteins in that kind of bones or shells or whatever is much different than these. Okay? Now, if we were cooking a chicken, a chicken stock, you don't want to really cook a chicken stock more than two, two and a half hours. But with a veal stock or beef stock for these very concentrated flavors, and concentrated sauces that we're going to do, you have to let this simmer six to eight hours, slowly. At that point, when that happens, you need to strain this now, because you've got impurities and you've got the marrow bar in there, okay? There's one other thing missing. I'm going to show you this. You've heard of this big fancy word called a bouquet gani? That's what a bouquet gani is. So, I mean, get over it. You know what I mean? Don't let it play with your emotions. I mean, it's basically a little thyme and some bay leaf and a little parsley. You could add peppercorns. You can wrap it in cheesecloth if you do. I just tie it up. I use it as a hostage, basically. And I add it in there, and I just it's going to give it a nice flavor. And if you're worried about it floating or losing it or whatever, I mean, you can always just tie it on the handle as well so it doesn't escape. You don't want your bouquet Ghani escaping. Now it's in there. Wow, okay. After it simmers, you strain it. That's what this thing is here. Okay? Now it's a strainer. This is what they call a china cap. I didn't make up the names. To me, it looks like a strainer. But it's a china cap when you go buy that. 
I sometimes, when I get wild in the kitchen, I'm like, you have nothing to do? I just pretend. Hey! <laughs> all you closet bammers. <laughs> come on out. Yeah. So now, you strain it, and that's exactly what we got here, folks. This is stock. We got beautiful beef stock, okay? Simple. Beef stock. All right. Now we've got stock. Why? I want to tell you the importance of a good sauce. It's from the uh, home office in Stock, USA. You know, the French call it fond, F-O-N-D. Well, basically, that's the foundation of good cooking. Fond de veau, fond de beef. Okay, we got that. Then, of course, in a Escoffier days, you know, it's not like today. Everybody's flipped out today about if you cook with a roux, people are like, oh, my God, he's using a roux. He has a quarter of a cup of flour and a quarter cup of oil. Oh, my God, it's going to feed 16 people. Relax. So, to kick it up a notch, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to now show you how to make stock into Espanol sauce. One of the mother sauces, Espanol. Okay, what do you need? Well, I'm going to show you right now. I got some bacon fat right here. Yeah, I don't know why people... Oh, yeah. I don't know why people are all flipped out about that stuff. You know, grandma, great-grandma, they did that, lived hundreds of years. You know, it's like, hey, get over it. Plus, it gives you beautiful skin. It's my theory. I just... Some people like Noxzema, some like pork fat. Now, I'm going to add the mirepoix. The celery, the carrots, and the onions. That's the mirepoix. I'm going to add that in the baking, in the bacon fat. I've got to season it so we give it a layer of, of flavor with salt, maybe a little essence. You think they had that in a Scoffier's day? No way, baby. Pity them. <laughs> ah, too bad. Doc, did you steal another one of my pepper mills? <laughs> now, salt and pepper, folks. We're going to... Cook this till it's tender. Don't try that at home. Now, I got a roux here. Half flour, half butter. And I brought it to that classical stage. That classical stage in a lot of French cooking when it looks like peanut butter. See? Doesn't that look like peanut butter? We got that beautiful color going on. Now watch what we're going to now do. What we're going to do is we're going to take our stock. You got to remember one thing. If you want lumps, if you want lumps, you always want to do the reversal, hot to cold or cold to hot. If this was boiling and the roux was hot and you added the stock to your roux, you'd get lumps. Then you really need a china cap, okay? So, I'm going to add my stock in here. You can always add, but you can't take it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so now, I'm adding my stock in here. Okay? When you use a thickening agent, like roux, like cornstarch or arrowroot, it'll never be at its full thickening ability until it comes to a boil. Okay? So when it comes to a boil, that's how, no, how, how thick it's going gonna, it's gonna to get. What we're going to do now is this. I'm taking a little more of that bouquet garni. I'm going to add it in there. Espanol. It's not demi gloss. It's espanol. Why? Because of the addition of tomato. That's what Escoffier gave to true classic cuisine. We're going to deglaze this with a little bit of tomato. We're going to cook this for a minute, two minutes, and then that goes in here so that we begin to get all of that wonderful flavor inside and color inside of our stock. After the break, we're going to take our Espanol sauce and we're going to kick it up another notch. Stick around. We'll be right back.
So, we're just espinoling around, as they all say. So you guys kind of get the uh, basics of the stock and now this Espanol sauce, the mother sauce? Yeah. Pretty simple, huh? You're smelling it and you're loving it. I am too. So um, we're going to let this uh, just kind of come up and simmer. And then, of course, as I always say, you got to taste, taste, taste. And that's exactly what we're going to do. At some point, we're going to taste this. And you really want to see the... Uh, how much you got to adjust the flavors. The consistency is a little... I added all that stock, by the way, that we had in the pan. So this is a little light. The consistency is a little light. Uh, it could be a little more... Uh, it could be redder in color. A lot of Espanols could be redder than this. So don't think that this is just the whole thing. That works for me. Yeah, that really works for me. Could add a little more pepper for me. Maybe just a little pinch of salt. So, now we've got the Espanol sauce. And you look in the mirror and say, self, now what do I do? <laughs> well, now that we have a mother sauce, there are lots of compound sauces, derivative sauces that you make from a mother sauce. Let's go back for a second. Like if, let's, let's just say hollandaise, which is the mother sauce that we talked about and did a show on. If we did the tarragon reduction, you have bernace. Or if you have orange reduction into a hollandaise, you have maltese. Well, if you have espanol, there are lots of ones that you can have. You could have a Diable. It's all standardized, universal, classic French, which is wine, shallots, and cayenne pepper, which is why I chose it. There's Robert, or basically in New York, as we would say, Robert, <laughs> which is wine, onion, and mustard. Lyonnaise, it's pretty obvious there. We have wine and onions. And Bordelais, one of my favorites red wine, and shallot. Now, you can also have a Perigoy, which we're going to do, or a Perigodine is another French name, which means with truffles. Not only am I going to do a sauce for you as a compound sauce with truffle, but this Perigoy sauce right here is fantastic with lamb. Because I don't like that, like, jelly thing. That's like <laughs> N-O for me. And I don't mean N-O being New Orleans. I mean N-O as far as that green. Oh! Please don't play with my emotions and be doing that outside. Wave a piece of mint over it or something. Now, here's how we're going to do this. Check it out. We have a stock pot and you have a sauce pot because we're making a sauce, not a stock. Okay. Just making sure you're all there. I have chopped truffle. Now, I don't expect you to go and spend a gazillion dollars. I'm just, you don't have to have the truffle in this. The key ingredient is you could have a little shallot. That's what these guys are right here, shallots. Yeah. Dice them up. You don't have a shallot. You can have red onion. Add a little butter in there. Sweat out your, that's the term, big fancy cooking term, sweating out the shallot. Should we add some shallot? Yeah. Okay. I'm difficult. We'll just add a little shallot in here. Susan and Felicia are back there going, oh, goodness, he's adding all kinds of stuff now. Oh, goodness gracious. Hey. You want a shallot? I'm giving you shallot. So you had shallot. Let me tell you something about shallot, too. A little cooking tip for you. You know, I don't have any problem in a little food chopper. You know, you get, you know, 80 cloves of garlic, put it in there, a little olive oil. Hey, great. Saves you a lot of time. You don't want to do that with shallot. You don't want to use the machines. Hand chop them because you want to leave the flavor of the shallot in there. So I got butter. Now I'm adding a little shallot. Wow. Huh. A little salt. And pepper. 
because we got to season it. Now, just as we're going to add now the truffle, and we're going to add... Now, let me tell you something about that. That was a no-no right there. The wine police should have came and just given me a ticket because I added Madeira wine for this particular sauce. You know Madeira, Portuguese. <laughs> You always want to pull it off the stove. Always want to pull it off the stove, and that way you can grow up and have big eyebrows like me. <laughs> and if you like Madeira, you can always add a little more. Now, that's going to reduce a little bit. Rack of lamb. That's the rack of lamb. You want to season it with essence. They didn't have that in Escoffier days. But then again, can't have everything. For them. Exactly. So I've seasoned both sides. What I'm going to do, you can sear them in a pan, or you can sear them as I'm doing on a little grill. Very important that you sear lamb for this particular dish first, because you want to immediately sear it to trap in a lot of the flavors because we're going to end up roasting this. Now, here's the deal with our sauce. We want to take and you want to strain. Eventually, I'm going to strain all of this Espanol into, uh, into a pot. And then I'm going to decide what I need for today or tomorrow. Because, folks, it ain't going to go bad. You keep it in the refrigerator, okay? It's not like it's going to go bad tomorrow. You decide what you want, what you can use in the next week or so. And then the rest of the stuff, you freeze it. I even take some of them and put them in little ice cube trays. So that way, if it's just like one or two people, you just pop out a few of them things, melt them down, and voila, you got Espanol. <laughs> All right, so now we got that happening. We'll come back to that in a second. I got the uh, couple of cups of what I need here. Now I'm going to add our Espanol to this Madeira and truffle, which now gives me the compound sauce, the Paraguay sauce, which I'm going to serve with my lamb, and it's going to be delicious. Mmm. I'm happy right now. We're going to sear this lamb. And then I'm going to pop it in the oven, 400 degrees, and I'm going to roast this for about 20 minutes, which will give me the medium rare to medium temperature that I want. Yummy, yummy. Hey, this would be a good time for you right now to go get that big bag of Zaps, potato chips or whatever, and, you know, get ready for a little rack of lamb. When we come back, notches unknown. Stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> Everybody, Emerald Lagasse here, and if you're just joining us, we're getting pretty saucy right now tonight. Because we're doing mother sauces. Now, I've got that sauce that we just made with a little bit of the truffle and the Madeira wine for our lamb. I told you earlier, too, that what I was going to do is I was going to just sear this, lock in the flavors of this, and then I was going to roast it for 20 minutes in about 375, 400 degrees. Yeah, you could still do that, but I changed my mind. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you have your own show. You can do that. Just confuse everybody more. I decided to leave it. It's, it's just grilling so nice right now. And if I wish you could smell it in here right now. Does it smell good in here, guys, or what? See, and I'm really loving this kind of like this 
char kind of thing. It's just, it's working for me. What can I say? I'm happy. Now, speaking about happy, I'm going to make it even a little more happy. Yeah, because I'm going to make to serve with this. I mean, it's not classical. I'm sorry. It's just emerald. Sorry. But I thought with this lamb and this perigo sauce that we would do some goat cheese mashed potatoes. Does that sound all right to you guys? All right. It sounded pretty good to me, too. Yeah. So I boiled up some potatoes so that they're near mush, drained them, because I don't want that starch water, put a little bit of cream in the pot. Now I want to season it, because I don't know where you're buying your cream. Where I buy mine, it don't come seasoned. A little salt and pepper. Then I'm going to put the potatoes back in here now. Okay? Let them get happy in there for a minute. Maybe a little more salt and pepper. I'm using white pepper, as they said to. So now I've got my masher. And uh, I'm going to start mashing those potatoes into the cream. And then instead of using butter, you know I love butter, but instead of using butter, I went and I like the texture of this. This is not like pure, this is not whipped. These are mashed. There's a difference. If I wanted them smooth, I would have whipped them or pureed them. Well, if I pureed them, I would have had pureed potatoes, not whipped or not mashed. You understand. So now that I've got this like really like happy, happy, goat cheese, you know, chev. I'm going to add that in there. If you don't have goat cheese, you could use pepper jack. You could use cheddar. Hey, you could use anything you want. Just remember one thing. You don't really want to, uh, I'm going to turn our lamb around. Wooey. Wooey. We're going to uh, mash them, but you look, you don't want to burn them. So once you get the cheese in there, you just turn the heat off. Nice and hot right now. Hi. <laughs> Gotta have some butter, babe. I mean... <laughs> That works for me. I don't know about you, but got to have a little butter in there. Make it taste delicious. Happy, happy. Now, we got our sauce. And boy, you want to talk about some good. I mean, look at this. With the truffle in there. Tell me what you think. I've already tasted it. It's up to my standards. Hopefully it's up to yours. Delicious, huh? Delicious. Don't you think that would be great with lamb? Oh, excellent. I know, I'm Delicious. on to something here. I'm thinking about doing this for a living. I took all. <laughs> I'm oh, that was so, I'm going to classically do a little presentation for you folks. Ah, uh, I'm not ready to. <laughs> uh, I want to have my lamb cooked just a little more. Hi, Rhoda, how you doing? Now, before we go back to the lamb, I promise we're getting there. You've heard of this sauce, I know, a gazillion times. Demi-gloss, right? Demi-gloss. This is exactly what it is. Espanol, one pot, right? Inside of this pot. Espanol. Brown stock, equal pots. Now, put this on the heat. What do we have? Bokegani. Put that in there. Now we're going to bring this up to the boil. The whole thing about demi-gloss is the reduction process. As it evaporates, it reduces, it gets more concentrated in flavor. That's what we're trying to do. 
We'll come back to that. Now, let's check it out. Here's what I would do for you. What's your first name? Mabel. Mabel. Check this out, Mabel. This is for you, honey. <laughs> okay. Watch this. Go cheese mashed potatoes. You with me? Yep. With a little butter. Oh. Right in the center like that. Oh. See? Oh. Works for me. Oh, it's going to work. You like lamb? Beautiful. Yeah, I love it. Watch this. That works for me, too. See, I'm using this knife like this because yeah. the chops are so hot. You always just follow the bone. You'll be in good shape, Mabel. Okay. Okay? Yep. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that wonderful sauce that we had, and we're going to put that sauce, like, all over just like that. Does that work for you? It works for me too. You don't mind if I, you don't mind if I just kind of, then we put one of these lamb chops like that, one of these lamb chops like this, one of the lamb chops like that, Mabel. And then just for you, I happen to fry some crispy spinach because they told me you like spinach. And I'm going to put a little bit of that spinach just like that. And there's my rack of lamb just for you, honey. Hey, don't even think about touching that dial. You know why? When we come back, I'm so excited. Marshawn Devin sauce. Stick around. Hey, hey. We're back. All right. We're back, and uh, what we're going to do right now is make another compound sauce from our mother sauce. This time, guys, what I'm going to do is use demi-gloss. Remember what I told you earlier about the consistency? The reduction process? Look how much it reduced, and look how nice this demi-gloss is. Talk about a nice piece of beef, huh, with a little demi-gloss on it. Yummy, yummy. All right. Marshawn de Vin sauce. You've probably seen M the Street Guy even talking about Marshawn de Vin sauce. This is it. A little butter and some shallot and about, oh, you know, 32 cloves of garlic, maybe, you know. <laughs> and then we're going to season this with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then the whole thing with Marshawn de Vin sauce, beside having a demi-gloss base, is being fortified. Don't you love that name, fortified? I'd like to fortify myself, you know what I'm saying? I love that. What we're going to do is fortify it with some red wine. We're going to start reducing the red wine like this and reducing, evaporating the alcohol, concentrating the flavors, and then we're going to fold in some of that demi-gloss. We're going to put some demi-gloss in there and let it get really cooked up and adjust the seasoning. How's the lamb? Excellent. Mabel, how are we doing, honey? Delicious. Fantastic. <laughs> Stick around. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Eggs who side. Stick around. All right. We're back. Now for the climax here, Mabel. This is Marshawn de Vin sauce. You ever seen the M the Street guy? Eggs Hussad with Marshawn de Vin sauce? No, I don't Well, actually, <laughs> actually, this is uh, what we're going to do. I got some toast. You can use English muffin. Some shaved ham. Happy, happy. Sliced tomato on top, seasoned with salt and pepper. Okay? I actually have put this on my menu, the brunch menu at Delmonico, because this dish is... Oh, you want to... Oh! oh! So excited. <laughs> Look at this. Poached egg on top of this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to eat these all up myself. <laughs> Poached egg like that, folks. Now, check this out. This is the, like, the amazing thing. Then, Marshawn de Vin sauce on top like this, right? But then to kick it up a notch with another mother sauce, a little hollandaise like this. Right? And then... Two side with Marshawn de Vin sauce. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody. Hey now.
Thank you.